very good day to everyone this is world federation neurology world brain day team and uh, youtube channel on behalf of social media and rest of the colleagues uh, very good day to all of you uh, i got uh, an interesting person to talk to you uh, on behalf of you all today this is uh, professor jasti kulkani she is very well known household name in <laughs> australia the, i have listened to her voice many times uh, on our national uh, uh, the Uh, the 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 electronic uh, media uh, even before internet was uh, around uh, significantly and popularly uh, just the, thank you for giving your busy time away for us uh, the no, my, my pleasure the short uh, the warning uh, first of all uh, the, let our viewers know uh, your journey of uh, becoming uh, professor jasti kulkani how did this happen So um my interest I'm a psychiatrist and consultant um a psychiatrist at a hospital but also I'm a clinical researcher and I was always interested in psychiatry as a medical student and then um well I actually deviated a little bit did a lot of emergency work and was very interested in becoming an emergency physician but then um after a while I changed my mind back again and became a consultant psychiatrist in the process I became very interested in clinical research and in particular neurobiological research because this is an area which I don't believe there has been significant enough attention and i sincerely believe that this is the way forward for psychiatry so i've done quite a, a lot of neurobiological translational research always looking for the the new treatments for the particular mental ill health conditions that people experience in in large numbers across the globe the, thank you and uh, the you know the i think oh, the, before this interview uh, some times back uh, the, we talked uh, to each others over the phone uh, about brain health uh, and uh, how neglected the uh, brain health uh, globally despite uh, it is what uh, make us a unique species uh, because of our brains uh, our brains basically uh, drives our actions uh, thinking behavior whether we are in the middle of a pandemic or not in a pandemic why do you think that uh, the we still uh, Uh, try to advocate things for silos in particular you have mental health uh, on one end uh, you have neurologic community neurological communities uh, on another and uh, social scientists uh, who are also driving the brain behavior brain related things uh, isn't it uh, time for us to redefine health uh, and unify all these concerted effort uh, under uh, one brain health and then encourage world health organization and other non governmental leading policy makers and organizations to promote uh, brain health uh, as a as a very high priority globally just like uh, they endorse how we should come out of this uh, pandemic uh, by offering covid shield and other things with a more globalized uh, approach uh, the what do you think of my uh, the somewhat inflammatory suggestion Oh, I don't think it's inflammatory at all. I think it's ex- absolutely the way we should be thinking about it. Um, unfortunately, mental health is a very diverse, fragmented field in itself. And so there are a number of people who advocate for one thing or the other. They advocate for the uh, environmental or um, social conditions that create mental ill health. and other people uh, will advocate for purely a uh, medical approach and and the problem is here the fragmentation doesn't really help the patient i mean what really is required i think is the is the old adage which is biopsychosocial biological plus psychological plus social and you integrate these approaches to come up with a a holistic program for the patient and in my view i think we we are currently focusing a lot of energy and attention on the social determinants which is important but less very much less on the biological uh, aspects that underpin these things and for for example 
someone who has experienced uh, early life trauma, early life sexual abuse, physical abuse as a child, this has significant impacts on uh, brain development. And uh, in particular, the, the neurocircuitry, the neurochemistry, the neuroendocrinology is all very critical in the future development of the person as they become an adult of the development of, of um, mental ill health conditions. And we know that this holds true. Uh, of course, we wish that, you know, environmentally we could prevent people from um, abusing children and that every child would live in happiness and have nurturing as an early life experience. But unfortunately, that's not happening. And so we also need to understand the brain and uh, then perhaps institute more targeted treatment modalities that could help the individual who has these experiences as an adult. So this is an example. You take any of the mental ill health conditions, um, there is a brain component and then there are factors in the environment that shape the presentation. But that would be the same for any, any condition that we'd care to name. So I completely agree with you that I think if we could stop being in silos, it would be a big step forward for our patients. Absolutely. I think you hit the nail on the head. Uh, the, even if I, if I replace uh, psychiatry to neurology, uh, I could still redo the same segment that you said uh, word by word, and it would still hold uh, true. Your husband, uh, who is a very well-known MS neurologist uh, this year's theme, would agree with you. That's yeah. probably why you two are still happily married. <laughs> uh, the, 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 just the, the, my other question is, uh, the, in fact, uh, about uh, 10, 12 years ago, a couple of us, uh, the, when we wanted to put uh, brain uh, uh, into its place, that's how this World Brain Day concept started. It started small and now it has uh, gained significant momentum and this is our eighth year. What we normally do is uh, we select a particular the, the disease or area of interest, uh, and then we partner with uh, a like-minded uh, global organization. World Federation Neurology, in fact, uh, they establish a thing called Global Neurology Alliance, uh, including uh, and encompassing all neurosurgery, neurorehabilitation, psychiatry, everything else, uh, basically trying to drive home the same thing that both of us were talking about. Uh, our innocent agenda at that time was raising the profile. I never dreamt uh, that uh, eight years down the track, uh, we would be reaching out to 100 million plus. Uh, and this morning I was uh, releasing video clips to American Academy of Neurology. Actually, I wanted to see 250 million people reaching out to and sharing things in social media in this virtual life, talking about their brain, brain health, uh, trying to encompass uh, all these uh, things together. How excited are you to see that this sort of a movement is happening uh, the, the globally, despite uh, the current uh, restrictions uh, that uh, you and me both enjoy in an ideal world, uh, I should have visited your office uh, and done this interview face to face, uh, probably over a cup of coffee, but it wasn't meant to be. And we are, we are joined, connecting to each other virtually. Yeah, look, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, I think that, that one of the, if there is an upside to this horrible pandemic, that one of the upsides is that we have become a much more global networked community by um, telecommunications and, and different methods. Um, and in some ways, we have a potential for a bigger reach. But I think, you know, well done to, to you and, and other people who are working in your organisations to actually develop this uh, concept of, of reaching out and uh, expanding the, the area of brain health and brain health concerns uh, around the world. So um, I would... I would hope that we could, uh, in fact, continue to do the work in this way. Uh, th th the, thank you, Jasti. I, I, I agree. And uh, the, we hope uh, the colleagues uh, uh, who are interested in brain health uh, would visit uh, World Federation Neurology website and download the toolbox. Uh, we took uh, efforts to create a whole lot of social media posts, uh, press briefs, uh, uh, other material, slide deck uh, for people to talk about. Uh, and we normally deposit them uh, for people to use. Uh, and uh, this morning I was sending another the, the video invitation for all Global Neurology Alliance leadership, uh, basically asking them to release a 15 second short video clip saying that uh, 
they support World Brain Day campaign and they support brain health uh, and with, there is no health uh, without uh, brain health. Uh, my last question to you is, uh, uh, the, the, what is your advice uh, to the younger generation, whether they are medical students uh, pursuing a career in psychiatry, neurology, neurosurgery, general medicine, uh, sociology, uh, politics, uh, uh, anything? The, what is your advice to them uh, these, the, in this uh, pandemic uh, with what we have learned during last 14 months uh, to serve the humanity uh, and thinking globally but supporting locally at the same time? What's your take home message to them? So I, I think that the connections are really critical and we are seeing new, new connections being built um, because no one group is ever going to solve the big problems. You know, you talk about uh, specialties of MS, multiple sclerosis, for example. I mean, there are many, many facets to that, which, of course, you and my husband know much more about than me. But it is, it is a team effort in every, every area. In my own fields of mental health, for example, you know, we do need to have the social sector mobilised. We need to have the psychological sector mobilised and we need the medical sector sector mobilised as well. If we're going to make a difference to the global prevalence of depression and, and other conditions. And then, of course, we have, you know, new um, challenges like, such as the COVID pandemic, which, of course, then has its own consequences, such as depression, anxiety in the aftermath. And heaven knows what the neuropsychiatric aspects of COVID itself, infection wise, will be around the world. And to tackle it all, it is uh, the job of the entire global village including people with strengths that are in areas of marketing and business and uh, social anthropology and other fields that we perhaps normally have not uh, necessarily gravitated towards in our work. But we could think again uh, to harness all the intellect and the energies that uh, many, many people and groups have in the world. And by doing that, I think we break down the silos um, we don't need to be as tribal as we have been in the past. And I think it's time to uh, put the patient's interests at, at the front and centre and take a holistic view and integrate all the different sciences and arts that we have at our, at our fingertips. I, I totally agree. In my normal day-to-day -day life, I am a very private person, but the pandemic basically showed me how much I was missing rest of the other connections so that I wasn't particularly thinking of. I remember when we came out of the second lockdown, when I had the opportunity to sit in a cafe, which I did uh, a couple of days earlier than others as I was walking the dog and then the cafe was open and I asked from the cafe owner whether he would allow me to sit and have a cup of coffee. When I was sipping that coffee, although I was, I'm sort of not a sort of you typical coffee snob, if you like, I felt like a king at that time that you suddenly realize uh, how much uh, very simple pleasures in life uh, that uh, you don't necessarily appreciate. Uh, I think when we do things uh, more together, we probably extract more joy and the other great things that you mentioned, the biopsychosocial or another way to look at it is psycho neuroimmunological aspects uh, we don't necessarily think of these things, but they probably help us immensely. I think even these little discussions between you and me probably have helped both of us to grow a couple of extra synapses in our brains uh, and a couple of other positive networks uh, in our brain. Absolutely. And you can't have too many of those. <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, the, 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 my last question, uh, uh, despite the busy day-to-day -day life, uh, the, you maintain... Uh, uh, exceptionally good work-life uh, balance, uh, uh, as I hear. The How do you balance uh, all these uh, busy requirements in your day-to-day -day life and keep smiling and maintaining a healthy healthy brain in yourself? <laughs> Look, I think it's, it's, uh, it's always the eternal struggle. But um, for all of us, I think the connections we have with family and friends are uppermost. And uh, so... You know, having having work that you feel uh, very excited and uh, in you know enthralled by, 
even after many, many decades of working, yes, of course, everybody has niggles and down days and difficulties with various uh, people in the workplace and so on. But if you keep the big goal in mind about being excited about what you're doing, that keeps you um, motivated and stimulated and a pleasure to, to go to work so it doesn't become a drag. And, of course, keeping your family and friends very close and knowing that the priorities are their, their welfare and looking after them and them looking after you is the really important social connectedness that, that we all crave as human beings. So Freud got a lot of things wrong, but one thing he did get right was he did talk about the importance of work and love. And so, um, again, keeping both of those balanced is hard, but in the end it is rewarding um, to take pleasure in family and friends and to take the stimulation and excitement and uh, the sense of greater purpose in, in work as well. I, I agree. I think uh, when you have passion and a sense of greater purpose uh, in what you wanted to do and when you add uh, uh, genuine uh, human things such as uh, love, uh, kindness, uh, compassion, uh, the, it, it's very hard for you to burn out, uh, basically, despite whatever the things, uh, challenges that are coming alone. As part of this interview series, uh, I had the good fortune of uh, talking to uh, Emeritus Professor Austin Sumner. You probably have not heard of him. He is retired now, and uh, he was uh, uh, in Dunedin, he's currently in USA, in Dunedin, and he was doing some of the original experiments with Ian McDonald, who put together the criteria to diagnose multiple sclerosis probably before you and me were born even. And uh, at the end of the chat, uh, uh, I asked from him, uh, uh, the, how did you manage uh, uh, the, the, the work-life issues uh, and hard work that you had to do? Because they were basically uh, doing uh, cat model experiments starting at three o'clock in the early morning and then going on till about uh, two o'clock, three o'clock the next day morning at a stretch as yes, they were basically anesthetizing them. They were basically doing laminectomies. They were injecting diphtheria toxin to nerve roots. We had no idea about the pathobiology of uh, neuroinflammatory disorders at that time. And uh, his answer was uh, quite uh, revealing. He said to me, uh, he looked me in the eye through Zoom window, of course, and then he said that uh, this, uh, we didn't feel tired at all. Despite we didn't have food or drinks, uh, two of us were doing really exciting things. We really wanted to know what exactly happened next. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 I think that excitement uh, basically kept them going. Uh, it's a different generation these days, of course, uh, but I still put the story out there so that uh, the young folks uh, can uh, absorb uh, whatever that they wanted to see. Uh, Jayashree, thank you very much for uh, your time today and uh, the, please encourage uh, your colleagues uh, and uh, your mentees uh, and students uh, and patients to visit uh, World Brain Day campaign. It is their campaign. Uh, we are here today because of our brains. We are talking to each other because of our brains uh, and there is no health without brain health uh, and we must uh, get this uh, word out to reach at least half the population in the world eventually. But for now, uh, let's surpass 100 million and 250 million to begin with. Thank you. I think it's fantastic what you're doing. And uh, my husband is Dr. Ernie Butler. So again, from Ernie and me, congratulations to you. And uh, we do encourage people to continue on with their explorations and their journeys. Uh, thank you. I think we should mention a word or two about Ernie. He had been uh, sing almost single-handedly looking after a larger chunk of uh, patients with uh, multiple sclerosis uh, from a very diverse uh, population. Uh, in Australia, people have to basically look after United Nations. Uh, many hospitals take care of patients from over 100 countries, 150 countries easily. I'm sure uh, Professor Ernie Butler's patient pool is no different to any others uh, and our sincere gratitude for all his work and all the mentoring that he had been doing for several decades uh, and pass our fondest regards to him yeah. also. I will. I will. Take care and stay nice well to and chat safe. To you.